Hello and welcome to part four, where we finally get into something interesting. Tables. So, I'm gonna start this right up. A table, as you may know, has columns and it has rows. Now, the way you make a table, or start a table, is with a table tag. Pretty self-explanatory. Table, closing table. Um, I'm putting this in page two, by the way, the one I showed in the last video on file structure. And it's got this link to the first page. Doesn't make a difference. The table will be below it on the page. But just to make sure, I'm going to put a break right here. There we go. Okay, so the table starts out with a table tag. Open it, close it, leave some room in between. The next thing you define, and I'm going to tab this over so that it looks nicer, is your table rows. So I'm going to make one table row and then close it. I'm going to make another table row and close it. So now my table has two rows and no columns. So the way this is set up is you define the table, then you define a row. Now you say however many table data as you want in this row, which is TD. So TR is table row, TD is table data, which is a column, essentially. It's one cell of a, a table. So I want, say, uh, we'll make it two by two. So I will make a few TDs here. And now we have a table. It's a two by two table um, with nothing in it. Now, I'm going to explain something really quick called a non breaking space. What that means is it's a space, like in between two words, just a regular space. But since HTML gets rid of extra spaces, you have to write it like this. That's an ampersand for all of those who can't see, or an AND sign as some people call it. It's right above the 7 key. So I want a non-breaking space, NBSP, and a semicolon. Now, the ampersand and the semicolon, that's called an escape character. For some special characters like quotes and greater than, less than signs, you need to use escape characters because the browser will misinterpret them as a tag or something and sometimes it won't display properly. So you always want to escape special characters. So I'm going to put a non-breaking space in all of my table data. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's right there. Do you see it? Of course not, because there's nothing in the table and it's got no borders around it. By default, a table doesn't have a border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a border to it and you set the border as um, a pixel amount usually I'm going to use pixels amount, pixel amounts and we're gonna make it two pixels just so you can see the border and look at that we've got a two pixel border and four empty spaces so as you can see we have a border of two pixels and four empty spaces with two pixel border around them so, to make this easier to see, I will name this row 1, column 1. And this one will be row 2, column 2. Row 1, column 2. Sorry. Row 2, column 1. And row 2, column Now, it's got something in it. Looks more like a table, right? I'm going to add another break up here just to space it away from that link. So, now we've got a table with row 1, row 2, and the columns in there. That's the basic setup. Now I'm going to teach you something new. Say I take out this TD. 
So now our first row only has one column. What happens? Well, let's find out. There's just nothing there. It's like it. the table wants to be that wide, but there's nothing to put there. So instead, what I'm going to do is add what's called a call span. Looks like that. Which means I want this particular column to be two columns wide. So I want it to span across two columns. So now my first table data goes all the way over to the edge, to the second column. So that's what call span does. Now say I want to take out uh, this TD right here. And I'm going to take off the call span. And I'm going to add a row span to this one. And the row span is going to be 2. As you might imagine, that means that this particular table data is going to be 2 rows down. Better. So, as you can see, this now goes down to both rows and the other two are unchanged. So that's the basic setup of a table and a little bit of stuff that you can do with it. Let me just fix this and take off the row span. So that's what you can do with row spans and call spans. The next thing I'm going to teach you is alignment. Now as you can maybe see not really. Um, how do I fix this? Let's give our table a width. Now, as you can see, it wraps to the size of the text. What we can do is add a width to our table. And I want my table to be 200 pixels wide. So now, it goes to the width of 200 pixels, which is smaller than it was before. So, take off semicolon, which is smaller than it was before, so the text wraps to the bottom. But say I make it 500 pixels, and now it stretches all the way over there. And maybe I want to add a height to it, and I want to make it 200 pixels high. So now, as you can see, it's spaced out quite a bit. So what I'm going to want to do with this is for the first row, I want my text to be aligned to the center. So I align center, and that makes both of the datas in this row align to the center. Now if I took this out and just put it on the first table data, which it would only apply to the first one. So align is what you use to align your text horizontally. Now on the second row, I want to vertically align my text. So I use V align, which stands for vertical alignment. So I want this to be bottom. So now, when I refresh, these are both aligned to the bottom because I made my second row vertically aligned to the bottom. Now, since I put the center align on the first TR only, the first row is the only one that has a center align, and the same thing with the vertical align bottom. Now, um, by default, text is aligned left center. So, if you want it to be left center, you don't have to change anything at all.